Today, to introduce to you again tonight, uh, Tobias Soda, Rector of Denmark's Royal Academy. Professor Soda uh, first started teaching at the Academy in 1951, and uh, night, uh, later on, uh, he was uh, a member of the faculty for one year, visiting at uh, MIT. He became Rector of the Academy in 1964. Uh, this is his first trip back to America in 25 years, and we're very happy to welcome him to uh, Muncie and to Indiana for the first time. Uh, Professor Fuller. Yes, it showed me I should do like that and be here. Oh, was a I think so, and then I should be careful not to step on this. Oh, yeah? Thank you, Ron. I want to thank the Dean for a nice welcome, and uh, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, I was so happy when I was asked to come here, and uh, I was very worried about speaking about China because uh, I thought somebody could much better do it here. But it gave me an opportunity to come back to the States, and I'm so happy being here. And uh, I, I have never really visited uh, the Middle West except for Chicago, and it has been such a, a pleasure and, and, uh, and a very nice experience being here. And uh, if you think there are any idea in giving lectures about China one day and Denmark the next, there are no more. Uh, idea in that the dean said, you know something about China, we are interested in China, and when you are here you can just as well uh, tell us a little about Denmark. Even it's very, very different. It likes an elephant and a mouse, and if you, I find uh, China enormously exciting. Uh, I know people who like Denmark but I have never heard about anybody who was excited about Denmark because uh, the qualities there is, is, is maybe not the, the, uh, just as to be excited. So uh, some of, uh, from the audience who might be here, uh, uh, was here yesterday, might be disappointed because I couldn't be as enthusiastic about what I'm telling you. Uh, I know it too well. Uh, uh, China, I, I knew so fluently that I could be just like that about it. But, Denmark, it's a very, very, very small country. You may know of it, I, I don't know how much you have heard about it. It's, it, it's so much on the, on the map of Europe, and you know Europe could be placed in a little corner of the United States. And it's a small country, and Danish architecture has not yet had any decisive influence on international development. Architecturally speaking, we have always been a province. We have been the receiving part of impulses from abroad. But we have maybe critically picked and chosen among all impulses, all the uh, impulses and try to adapt and uh, climatize the impression to Danish traditional craftsmanship, habits, way of living, climate, and landscape. We have never had any revolutionary contribution to offer to architecture, except maybe the student revolution, but maybe a certain architectural quality and an interest for fine detailing and craftsmanship. In all periods you will find a functional tradition related to craftsmanship and traditional materials, which of course are going to disappear in our day's industrialization. May we look at the first picture, please? The 
proves to be true, so it, that is all right. It's all right. without big contrasts, undramatical, and our climate is temperate. The lines in the landscape continuous and curved in section as well as in plan, indicating the coasts. Few places in the country are far from the sea. You have a horizon everywhere, and the Horizontal lines are most strongly emphasized at the seaside by waves and sunsets, as you saw before. <coughs> the weather is changing from day to day, uh, often from hour to hour. Rain changes the sun and the sky is mostly covered by clouds some friendly and some promising drama, storm and thunder. Once upon a time, Denmark was covered by forests with oak as a dominating tree. Later, beech was the most common tree in our woods. The farmers' houses are one-story buildings with steep, flat roofs in keeping with the horizontal lines of the landscape. The trees often till about the west wind as the prevailing wind in a windy climate. I think they are not following each other. No, that was not that. It's the opposite as it was yesterday, I'm sorry. There's something wrong. No. Never mind. There. That was about the horizontal lines, the buildings in the landscape, always in one story and with the set roofs. The four wings of the traditional farmer's house make a well sheltered yard for people and domestic animals. 2,000 small village churches were built all over the country in the 12th and 13th century with granite, nave and chancel and of the utmost simplicity in form. <coughs> Cathedrals were built in Lund. It's written today, but the southern part of Sweden was uh, Danish once upon a time. Uh, and Vipo and Ripe, uh, the three cathedrals and masters from Germany and France, even from Italy, were called to these places. And the cathedral workshops were centers for training for builders, 
stone cutters and master builders later practicing in the whole country. Oh, that must be something wrong there. Sorry. I don't understand. There you are. Flat feelings in the interior of the small churches in the late Middle Ages, bell towers were added to the Romanesque naves, dominating the villages and landmarks in the landscape. In the island of Bonham, the round churches also served as fortifications in times of war and unrest. Strong buttresses were late additions. Severity and simplicity in forms and materials of a warm texture in the again and again whitewashed walls. In Denmark, brick was first used in the 11th century in some churches and castles. In the 16th and 17th century, castles like Hombo, to your left, and Fraueksbo, uh, to your right. The king asks master builders and architects from abroad, from abroad, mostly from Holland, to come to Denmark. A king, Christian IV, even used the foreigners to build the capital's public buildings, like the exchange you see to your right, beginning of the 17th century, and the nobility showed up inspirations from travelings abroad in their manor houses in the countryside. As you see there, the nobleman has been in Venice, I'm quite sure, seeing some churches there. Around 1700, a few Danes practiced as architects for the king's palaces, trained in their use as gardeners. Here, Fredensborg Castle, the summer residence for our queen. You may know we have a queen and a king for the moment. Schellagenborg, as you see to your right, were uh, well, the architectural school has, uh, has its main resident for 225 years, was originally built as a palace for a royal family around 1680 by a Dutch master builder. But in 1754, the king donated Charlottenburg Castle to the same year erected Royal Academy of Fine Arts an art school for Danish painters, sculptors, and architects on the background of craftsmanship, skill, and talent in order to educate sufficient Danish competent experts for all constructions of royal and public administration buildings. And in order not in the future to, uh, to make it necessary to ask foreigners to come to the country. The very first director of the academy, his name was Nikolai Eitwell, had studied the most contemporary and new architecture in Austria, Germany, and France. He had planned the new district of Copenhagen, called the Frauerkstall, part of the central Copenhagen, and between 1750 and 54, he uh, uh, designed the four palaces of Amalienborg, originally to four outstanding noblemen, not for the king, but later it, uh, when the king's palace burned down, it was bought of the king and for about uh, 150 years it has been the, uh, the palace of the king and today it's the palace of the queen. In the interior, artists from France collaborated with young Danish craftsmen. The second director of the academy, the French sculptor Sally, was responsible for the imminent equestrian statue 
of the King Frederick V who erected the Royal Academy. From that day up to our time, nearly all the very best architects of East, each period have worked as professors in our school. That would say that re the relation between school, theory, and praxis has been rather close. Late 18th century, Professor Hastoff made design for the colonnade of Amalian Ball, the entrance to the King's Palace. Um, and he made the mansion called the Hastoff's Mansion neighbor to Schellagenburg as a model for all middle class mansions built by Danish master builders, craftsmanship in Copenhagen. Today it's the uh, re residence for the, no, not the residence, but the administrative center for Copenhagen, and I have my office on the second floor. Not involved in middle and late 18th century European wars, Denmark and especially Copenhagen made profitable trade. The harbor of Copenhagen was among the most busy ones of Europe. Big warehouses were built along the waterfront and nice dwellings for wealthy merchants along the canals. Or canals, not choose me. Up to the beginning of the 19th century, half-timbering was the dominating construction method for farmers' houses and most buildings in towns. The filling was clay, whitewashed, to make the tart timber stand out. Half-timbering is giving a sort of order to architecture, an order which, through centuries, developed craftsmanship, made carpentry to a sort of standardization. You only needed to ask for a house uh, of so and so many bays, and you knew exactly what you would get. You could put windows wherever you wanted it, uh, between the posts, and still keep the calm order and rhythm of the house. The carpenters and the other craftsmen did the job according to the given site without any use of an architect. When around 1800, brick construction became more common uh, due to fire registrations uh, too, the system of identical base was transferred to brick houses in a bay and window reason. Even the small brick modules made it possible to put windows wherever you wanted it. And therefore, in Denmark, we still speak of three and four bay houses in brick as well as in half timber work. The brick builder buildings from around 1770 in Christiansfeld, Jutland, are simple, undecorated constructions in brick of good architectural quality in their logical proportioning and simple refined detailing. Political stupidity and military inferiority changes the situation early in the 19th century. Copenhagen was bombed. The Englishmen partly captured, partly destroyed the Danish proud, the fleet, in 1807. And a national bankruptcy, 1813, made Denmark to a poor country. Copenhagen was reconstructed, but with all necessary consideration to economy. The classicistic architectural ideals of the time fitted well with the tradition of simplicity and order. The dominant architectural person, his name was C. F. Hansen, rebuilt the city, cathedral, and the palace of Christiansborg. C. F. Hansen loved the simple geometrical and stereometrical forms. He had studied uh, Le Doux in France and a dignified grandeur of scale of all public buildings. As head of all building activity in the country, he censored all facades in Copenhagen, 
made decisions for height of buildings, roofs of the streets, even where the medieval curved street lines were preserved, the houses were of the simple bay and window resin, smooth oil painted plaster walls, few but refined details. Simplicity in proportion, exactness in detail are qualities you will find that turn to efforts of Danish architects ever since. At the Academy, Hansen not only rebuilt the hall from the Baroque to a classicistic interior in the uh, Charlottenburg Palace, when as head of school for about 40 years, he influenced generations of Danish architects, though somebody probably heaved a sigh of relief when he died 86 years old, 1846. Sometimes students say to me, be careful. I've been head of school for 15 years. In interiors from 1830, you see how the middle class of an impoverished country would center on domestic life in homes with few but durable and genuine pieces of furniture. Culturally, we consider the period as the Danish Golden Age. In rooms like these eight, Christian Andersen, Kierkegaard, and Ørsted were uh, frequently guests. With a new constitution in 1849 uh, uh, and the death of H. of C. F. Hansen, the time of absolute monarchy was definitely brought to an end. The bourgeoisie was politically leading and the new clients for architects. To be an architect was from that time a liberal occupation. The Polytechnical High School of Denmark was erected 1829, and the academy flourished as an art school. But it was necessary to show up professional qualifications. Thesis tests were introduced in the 1860s, 100 years later that the school was erected. The public problems were hospitals like the Kommune hospital in Copenhagen and a state hospital outside Copenhagen which is functionally elaborated in plain style by our greatest 19th century architect Gottlieb Binnensberg. And he also designed low-cost housing schemes in 1853 anticipating the ideals of our time. What's happened? Yes, thank you. Uh, anticipating the ideals of our time with differentiation between vehicular and pedestrian streets. The interest in home life and comfort is strong in Denmark in all later epochs. But before invention of bathrooms and the children preparing schoolwork at the dining table. I can tell you it's not long ago that this nice little back there is uh, it's my mother. And uh, uh, this is my mother and her um, sister and brothers around the table. And my grandfather was director for the academy. He was a painter. And when I was a child, I visited him there and stayed with him in the house. So I'm a very old man. Here are the children's music at the piano and their paintings of spring flowers. And finally, a party at home with close friends and the Christmas celebration of the family. You will find a strong interest in Denmark in your closest environment, your home, your furnitures. And that's just the background from the sort of theme uh, in contemporary time for uh, interiors and furniture in Denmark. The Academy arranged competition with golden medals as prize. 
Subjects were all potential problems of the new society, and the young architects were supposed to master all old conventional style, Gothic, Romanesque, Renaissance, Classicist, etc. Here is a cathedral design by a man called Milder, the head of school in the late decade of 19th century, uh, for about 40 years, and a lighthouse from about the first decade of this century. National problems like national museums, to your right, and national, uh, national museum to your right, and national theater to your left, were the most prominent manifestations of architectural skill in late 19th century. All young architects spent a year or two at least in Italy, France or Spain to make studies and measurings of all buildings and details. The drawings were used at home in the architects' own projects. The drawings were often of high quality, like this made of one of the professors, Hack Kampmann, who started a tradition which is still alive in our school, not anymore for getting details to your projects, but as a training in seeing, in understanding of what you see, and in reproducing what you have seen. Measurings and sketches in freehand still absorb our students. But of course, I can tell you that that professor, Kampmann, he wrote after some years in Italy that he was tired always in the old buildings to find the old uh, 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 measuring uh, uh, marks from all architects who has been there before and made, made measurings of exactly the same buildings. Town Hall architect of Copenhagen, Martin New York, was professor at the academy at the same time as Kampmann, beginning of this century, a period where liberal and social movements, where folk high schools and corporations among farmers were important new formations. New York and Kampmann started in the, uh, in the education, in the school, a Danish class where small daily problems were given, small factories, diaries, small dwellings for the men in the streets, problems which never before had been considered as architectural problems. The students themselves started an association for measuring and publishing examples of, uh, examples of Danish architecture, like this countryside house, from the late century, this alone, the most beautiful little uh, piece of architecture with the most refined detailing in the inside. The Academy opened up a special two years basis course for students from secondary schools on university level. Until then, they were all craftsmen. But still the classmen trained students from technical schools were the majority. Young architects like Kai Fisker won competitions about small railway station in uh, Bonholm in 1917. And in this period a new classicistic interest was strong with emphasis of the traditional qualities, simplicity, proportions, texture, detailing and excellent craftsmanship in modest buildings like this administration building to your right for a provincial plant and a simple one-family house both designed around 1913 by the later professor Eva Benson. Architects planned developments of one-family houses low cost but of quality. That was around 1950-20. Architects collaborated about different simple types of low-cost houses where the drawings were available for ordinary people very inexpensively. An early program of research which had an important influence for its time. 
The first real terrace housing projects from 1923 was built for the man in the street as a development of the traditional dwellings of the small provincial town. The terrace house was lit and up to our days extremely popular in Denmark. Backerhusen, as you see here, designed by Eva Benson, are situated in Copenhagen. In the 20s, most of our best architects were involved in housing problems, trying in the overall plan to make beautiful gardening in the courtyards of the blocks and in the detailed plan, dimensioning each of an apartment's room to common types of furniture. Important for the progressive development of these days were a critical magazine uh, with architects as editors and Paul Henningsen as leading author. Critical review, review, critical review, considered the Royal Academy as dangerous and suggested to close the architectural school. But all problems were discussed in the, in the magazine, the furniture design, they thought the, uh, the academy, the architectural uh, education, was far too involved in the arts. And they, in the magazine, they uh, discussed all problems, lighting, city planning, landscape preservation, through poor and good examples. Credit Scavu's idea was, of course, parallel to international trends, but the design of the modern movements was strongly criticized as well as the national formalism. The traditional housing blocks were broken up in order to give all apartments identical ideal orientation for sun and view to the greenery. In the 30s, all apartments got their own balcony as a small but useful outdoor space for living in summertime. More than other Danish architects, Kai Fisker influenced domestic architecture in the 20s and 30s. He translated the international ideals of functionalism to the Danish way of living and building traditions, continued what he called a functional tradition. His Westerseehus, as you see, to your right in Copenhagen with the bay window balcony risen, became a model for thousands and thousands of Danish housing schemes. At the architecture school at the academy, Fisker's professor made the third year to a housing class. All students had to pass the one-year course dealing with housing problems, and Fisker initiated a real research about housing, engaging all student, students in the course, and they started with a survey over the development scheme. And all common types of apartment were registered and analyzed with advantages and disadvantages, and a publication of the material was used by all practicing architects at that time involved in housing construction. That was in the middle of the 30s. Kitchen and bathrooms were analyzed in all details and new and better types developed. They were too small at that time, you may see. <laughs> During the 30s and beginning of the 40s, the architects were practically and socially deeply engaged in housing problems. Every year new housing schemes represented some improvements. Here one of the very best uh, schemes from 1940, before the difficulties procuring iron from abroad due to the war and occupation made a stop in the progressive movement. Another phenomenon which has been of importance for progressive development in Danish architecture is the competition. Every year, through more than 50 years, competitions between practicing architects are carried out for most important buildings and city planning problems in the country. We can here really speak of a sort of research, 
when 20 or 50 more architects are trying at the same time to collect and develop ideas in different fields, from housing schemes to schools or university camps. In 1931, Kai Fisker and C.F. Müller in Aarhus won the competition about a new university in Aarhus, which combined the best aspects of functionalism with good Danish tradition, far from conventional, conventional international monumental style in simple function detached buildings standing in an open park. Here the first building, the Physic Chemical Institute, with its clear cubistic forms, 30 degree roof, pitch, and yellow brick, carried up until our days. An overall disposition, which has been followed in all later buildings, in the, in the university main building from 1950 and the library from 1964. And also that's the campus of the Aarhus University, where you find a, a, a total uh, ideas in, in the whole. So it's even it's built um, through about uh, 35 years. You will feel it's uh, a unity. Today, our famous church, the Grundtvig Church, was uh, finished as late as 1940 as an outstanding example of traditional craftsmanship and a textual homogeneity of exterior and interior. The architect's name was Jensen Klint, and he was the father to our most outstanding furniture designer, Karl Klint. And he was professor at the Academy in Furniture Design, and he started in late thirties and the forties a parallel research to the former mentioned housing studies with, with focus on utility values of all furnitures in common use. Especially he made studies of cupboards and wardrobes, bookcases, with detailed research of size of all common use porcelain, tools, clothes, etc. You see one of the cupboards, no, excuse me, that's something else. He refined through research and serious artistic judgment types of furniture, which was of great importance for Danish furniture design many years ahead. A later generation of furniture designers have relied on his research, his ideas are principle for design. The Second World War caused restrictions in materials and forced architects to continue the brick tradition, as you will see in this uh, development scheme, Sunogos Park from 1950, with semi-detached and terrace houses all for rent around a green common. The scale is human, the architecture are modest, that it almost become anonymous. The prevailing housings in the 50s were built in brick in the design of Kai Fisker. The well park in here marks the transition to prefabrication and standardization with load-bearing cross walls in concrete and concrete parapets to the balconies. In the field of single-family houses, influences from USA and uh, Japan have been strong in post-war Danish architecture. Johan Utsan, you may know his name from Sydney Opera House, introduced the open plan system in 1952 in his own house. A new generation of young architects and professors at the Royal Academy followed up the open plan idea. Here, yeah, Christian Sørensen's own house from 1955 on a simple and expressive constructional principle of timber columns and beams. The black tart timber frame work defines a powerful spatial entirety. The constructionally spacious architecture is carried through with the highest degree of logical consistency and discipline in the house of Halder Gunderson built for himself in 58. 
Uh, at the same time, Yon, now that was the house of, of Gulishan. In 1956-60, Johan Utsan built the least expensive, low-cost dwellings of the time in Denmark. I mentioned the economy because later Johan Utsan was known to have built the most expensive building in the world, but uh, uh, that was supposed to be an extraordinary building, which shouldn't be uh, economical. But when the problem was to build something economic, economic, it was easy for him to do it. And these are among the best and the most inexpensive in Denmark. Streets of courtyard houses hug the undulating site so that each house gets the benefit of its own site to trap the sun and yet share in the view over a common open space. Buildings and courtyards are shut in behind yellow brick walls of various heights, providing for privacy. Simplicity in uh, the traditional material, brick and wood, the simple formal strength and the friendly atmosphere of the courtyards shows Utsan's individual schemes origin in Danish tradition. And late in the 60s, Utsan made a new scheme of courtyard houses you see here in Fredensborg, following the same main ideas as in Elsinore, one of the most charming and personal semi-detached house developments in Denmark. At the same time, Arne Jacobsen was a leading Danish architect. Impulses from outside are evident in his office building and his SAS hotel. But especially in his interiors, you will find Jacobsen's own personality in his elaborate Danish refined detailing. In the staircases here in his uh, town hall from 1956, outside Copenhagen, in every fixture, uh, the fittings, handles, and furniture, you see the, his relation to Danish tradition, his interest of uh, the fine craftsmanship in the detailing. For a few years, Anna Jacobsen was appointed professor of the academy, but he preferred to concentrate on his design and finish teaching rather quickly. As jury member in CCID works, his influence was remarkable at the academy for many years. We just have to change the... about City Opera House, a manifestation of his extraordinary talent, his originality and visions. The Academy was simultaneously appointed higher school on university level, not anymore just an art school. Professors in different architectural fields were appointed in restoration, in building techniques, city planning, landscape and gardening, in industrial design, graphic design, furniture design. The school was still aiming giving a common education in architecture. The last two years, the students were allowed to make their design into special fields among the many subjects, but the educated new architects were not considered as specialists. 
All problems were supposed to be realistic contemporary problems and efforts were given to find realistic solutions. The number of students were about 600 in the school, uh, but the number of applicants were four or four, five times as many. The school arranged special one-month courses in order to make a selection of the very best, and the professors were mostly outstanding practicing architects. Their research, their progress, and new ideas were supposed to develop in their practice their profession as architects. The Danish architects were extremely active in the 60s. There were a lot of interesting jobs to, do, to get. The field of school buildings were favorite problems, and the standard for primary school as well as secondary schools became rather high. The school here in Copenhagen is a primary school from uh, the 50s by Kai Fisker. The one-story school was a result of several competitions and very popular since 55, where Arne Jacobsen built his Munkogard school, school with fine relationship between classrooms and small intimate courtyards with beautiful plantations designed by Arne Jacobsen himself. Another school was a result of another competition where all classrooms are completely separated as detached buildings connected by low corridors. Simple resistant brick and wood are the only materials used even in the pavements of the courtyards giving unity and a minimum of maintenance. In Kain or secondary school in Jutland, a new school type was introduced, namely no general purpose classrooms at all and special classrooms placed around the aula and all connected to protected terraces and all the students have to move from one room to another to each new uh, subject. Fries and Murphy, you may know Knud Fries, he was a, uh, a guest professor here a few years ago, are the names of the architects to Scannerball Secondary School. You see it there. In Jutland, from here from the uh, uh, middle of the 70s, terrace in three plans, all covered to the south by a continuous row of glass balls. And the LO High School to your right is a school center for separate courses. The school is centered around, uh, around a beautiful courtyard. During the 60s, the housing constructions were more and more industrialized without too much interest, architecturally speaking, and from our best architects who were busy with other problems. They had very little to do with it. They found more inspiration uh, in other problems. The government focused on economy, rational building methods in the housing field, more than on quality and further progress. The high glass axis you see here was one of the first examples of a development designed by four big architectural firms and contractors specialized in prefabrication of concrete elements. We're not very proud of it. The plans of the apartments are stiff due to standard modules and the exterior rather schematic. But higher class sector has some architectural qualities you will not find in many other housing schemes for that time. A strong reaction against the sterile atmosphere in most new housing areas started in the late 60s. And we find a growing interest for the milieu. Through research in National Institute of Building Research erected in 47, through papers, broadcasting, TV, we could demonstrate how people were still far from being alike in wants for living. Here you see comfort in workers' home. Here, formalities of different kinds, the cultivated old wealthy lady and the young architect family in 1965. Conventional meal in the dining room and the artist in his atelier. 
Finally, the old man, poor but satisfied with one important thing, his freedom, and the man in a houseboat with his beer. We are in 1968-69, the time of stu student revolution, which was a sort of a success at the academy, with a consequence of important changes in the architectural education. Even the overall left-wing political trend was strong in our student revolution. It's understandable that the conflict in society between the dynamic technical economical development and the lack of humanistic goals could be felt strongly by architects dealing with technical as well as with artistic and humanistic problems. The students felt the education was too restricted in formal architectural problems and the efforts towards realistic solutions not wide enough. Especially they found a lack of information about the political, economical and the social background for the building industry in our society. They felt it more and more impossible to find criteria for selecting students among so many applicants and they felt it necessary to let all students be responsible themselves for their own studies. The architectural school opened up for all applicants which satisfied the demands for entrance, even we never from the government got the money propor uh, proportional to the increased amount of students from 600 to 1,800 in two years. All compulsory courses were made free, open to everyone after the student's own choice. Finally, all ex examination were abolished except for the final thesis work, which never had been compulsory. The architectural education was made free with a comprehensible, comprehensive amount of offers in all fields. The idea behind was to develop the student's independence and responsibility in a dynamic world with accelerating changes. Today, no one in the second in our school even not the professors, wants to abolish these improvements. But you will find different contents in the different offer programs for an architectural five years, five and a half years study. In some departments, the political, economic and analysis take up an essential part of the program. In other parts of the school, you will find a more traditional training and a few places, the pedagogical idea of letting the students select and combine different courses to a personal program. You will find all trends from school in uh, uh, other country, in schools in other countries, in Europe and the States. And uh, you will find them collected in one place in Copenhagen or in Aarhus. Because we just have these schools. You may know in Great Britain they have about 50 or 60 registered schools and they are all different to each other. If you don't like, there, there are too much uh, uh, technical research in one, you can just cross the street and ask admittance to another one where they still think of architecture as an art and there are other places where you uh, will find it more like a kindergarten and, and uh, finally uh, there are some of a completely different uh, part. But it's good, they can concentrate but because they have so many different schools, we just have the two uh, today and uh, uh, up to a few years ago it was just one. So uh, we have, uh, I would say, all of the trends inside one school and in many ways it's good because uh, we can discuss what is going on and uh, even it might be difficult in such a big school uh, to know what's going on everywhere. Uh, I think in some way it's good that uh, you can meet in discussion about this instead of just saying I don't like you, I want to go to another place and I'll be happy there because you will never uh, uh, meet. Outside the school, we find new trends in housing industry trying to consider human scale and environment, uh, uh, 
environmental uh, values in Alpatslund were 1,500 one-story courtyard houses. Roadways and uh, vehicular traffic are completely separated from pedestrian traffic in a simple system of roads connected with footpaths, bridges and tunnels. You will find two-story semi-detached houses and a three-story blocks. The main architect is Müller Jensen. In Faro Metro from 19... Now that was related to what I just said. In Faro Midpoint from 1970-74, you see the tendency to concentrate the three-story blocks in order to stimulate ideals of fellowship and collective, collective arrangements. Placed on terraces, all apartments have got their own four meter by seven meter open air room or balcony as a very charming contribution. Uh, the architect Viggo Müller Jensen has been professor in our architectural school in more than 25 years. He just left a year ago, 70 years old. From the latest years, you will find many concentrated schemes with just from 200 to 400 dwellings. In human scale, we don't build the big uh, areas with about 1,000 or 2,000 uh, dwellings in one. There's enormous uh, reaction against the big schemes, and today we mostly build with uh, a size of two to 400 dwellings. Here in Gassehaven, in traditional material, and you will find other ones in, based on industrialized systems. Industrialization are the condition for all constructions of greater institutions. A new university in Odense on the island of Fyn is the result of a competition and extremely different from the university in Aarhus, as showed before. Professor Holscher in our school is one of the leading architects Flexibility and possibilities and unforeseen extension in a 20 to 30 years construction period are decisively taken in consideration. The diagram shows how the five main faculties are placed on either side of a main transportation axis with possibilities for the most convenient connection between related subjects. In Herlo, Hospital in Copenhagen, the patient sick ward is placed in a 25-story tall block, while all treatment, operations, etc., is placed in one-story building, raised one level above the ground floor. A 15 by 15 meter module are giving possibilities for changings. Slum clearance is an important problem which is discussed in public by practicing technician and politician, as well as among teachers and students. Ten years old ideas about total demolition and new construction are left in favor of a more gentle reconstruction, uh, preserving or recreating human milieu values. Our department for restoration and several departments for building construction are dealing with renovation problems of city districts or single blocks. Establishing pedestrian streets and town districts without vehicle traffic are popular trends at the academy as well as among practicing city, city planners. City planning of uh, different scale from national planning for the whole country to more local planning are problems inside school as well as outside school in praxis. Research is necessary for all creative work in the field. In our department for industrial design, problems may be set of knife, spoon and fork. From Francis John Utzon, Sydney Opera House. Many of our student projects have something to do with research today. We think that an architectural school needs a similar close relation between research and teaching as in other universities. Necessary for the quality of the education, 
vital for the surviving of our profession. Just as well as imaginations, visions, ideas, dreams, and professional skills still do it. Houses can be built without architects, and all sorts of planning can be carried out, and people of many other professions are anxious to take over our jobs. But we think that most people would understand that the swimming pool here of Eben Khan Clemson meets the demands in a way that make you happy, just as well as the new uh, small crystal palace of, uh, in Copenhagen, Bella High Center, built of Ole Meyer, finished one or two years ago, or Johan Utsun's church in Bauswehr from 1976. Maybe the demands for artistic qualities, imagination, and visions are more necessary in the, econom in the economic depressed 1970s than it was in the optimistic 1960s where we thought everything was possible. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>